So this video is going to be a shop tour. The word shop is in air quotes because first and foremost, this is a garage. This is meant to store two cars when the weather is bad, when it needs to. And so I work under that constraint. Everything that is in here either folds up against the wall, stays on the wall, or rolls out of the way. This is a 24 by 24 foot square. It is somewhat insulated, although not very well. And it has an attic, which is very nice for storage. This is my chop saw, Hitachi miter saw. I use it very, very rarely. It just creates too much dust. But when I do, I put it by the garage door so the dust just blows out that way. I have some crude wings here to help support some of the stock. And moving on, we have my uh, belt spindle sander. I had a video about that tool and the mobile dust collection cart it sits on. Again, theory is dust goes out the garage. I have four lights, four LED lights that I've set at various points in the shop. I may not use them all at one time, um, and I also have the lights that are on the circuit for the garage. Here is my some shelf storage I made. The bottom portion is for sheet goods, so it's on casters and it rolls out. And when there's sheet goods to be stored, I put them in here. When there's no sheet goods, like right now, I just store my jigs and things like that. This is the base I use for my router pantograph. These are some pieces of plywood with sandpaper glued to them. And the middle row here, we have nuts, bolts, washers, things like that, Craig pocket hole stuff. My sanding storage station, so sanding blocks, sandpaper, various grits, belt, disc sander, and uh, pads. This is a Porter Cable dovetail jig. I use this to make half-blind dovetail drawers. I uh, used it for this and this to make drawers. Very handy. It has other functions too. This is a Ingra box joint jig. I've only ever used it to make one eighth inch box joints. This is the router pantograph mechanism itself. I use that to make signs, um, names, things like that, letters. Some templates, some hinges, and uh, some my circle jig and a line level. Up here is my wood storage. The wood I get is either from Home Depot, Menards, big box stores, or in the case of this uh, mostly cherry hardwood flooring, free off of Craigslist. And so I don't really have the space to hoard. So my wood storage is usually uh, just in time, just what I need type of storage system. Here's my ladder. Here is uh, my battery charging station. Again, all the walls, so um, everything is interchangeable. And this is my safety PPE station, um, towels, I have some goggles, some hearing protection, respirator, fire extinguisher, so I store my extension cords. But I really like this stereo, and it was a little bit of extravagant buy, but it charges my phone, it can charge a DeWalt battery, and has some prongs to actually charge, you can plug tools into, so that's nice. This is my fold-down workbench. I think it was an April Wilkerson design, just a sheet of three-quarter inch plywood, and it has lasted me for almost four years. Uh, every year, like for example, I will take um, a vise. One of the things I do would be attach a vise and do golf grips and things like that. But every year, I take a chisel or a plane and scrape off the crap. I've cut into it before, and I put a new coat of varnish on it. And it works well. The edges are all at 45 degrees and rounded because this is also an outfeed table. Stock comes off my table saw, hits this table as an outfeed. Above the table, I have my dust collection. This is just a box fan with a filter, and this gets a bad rap, but this system and the other fan over there work very well. And I switch out the filters in my house. They're 20 by 20 fan filters every two months. So the dust that comes off the table when I'm sanding, dust that comes off the table saw when I'm sawing, really gets captured by those filters. Um, and I think it's a pretty impressive and cost-effective system. This is stationary dust collection. It's a big shop vac inside a box lined with sound dampening foam, like my mobile station, but this one's stationary. It doesn't move. Uh, we have a big rectangular uh, floor register in the back, which brings in air, and then a fan at the top to help exhaust air. Very important to exhaust air in these types of things, um, or else your motor might burn out. Both are plugged into the same extension cord which runs all the way across to the other side of the shop. You can see it come down the corner there. The reason is because that is a circuit that goes inside the house. It's not on the same circuit as all the other tools. So the shop vac when it's on, 
I can use that with my table saw, which is on the garage circuit, and not have to worry about overloading a circuit with both those tools. Just a simple separator system. They sell these um, most places online, Home Depot. This wall is most of my tools, actually all of my tools. Up top, we have some just vertical crap storage, uh, some sawhorses, some heaters, stuff I don't use all that often. The top row is power tools, mostly DeWalt, except for the Makita angle grinder. This is my air compressor hose reel, which is connected to the air compressor. And um, it sits on a uh, cart, basically, that is made of an old door. That's what I'm pointing out here. These are the drawer fronts, where I store all of my stuff related to the air compressor, pin nailers, blowers, things like that, and all the accessories that go with it. The uh, hand tools, uh, they all have their own little space. Each was customized. The bottom, I'm sorry, the power tools. The bottom are the hand tools. You get your wrenches, uh, your chisels, your screwdrivers, saws, pliers. This is my most often used plank and I put all the stuff that I use all the time on this one section. So measuring devices, squares, uh, pencils, uh, you have uh, screwdrivers, tape measures, adjustable wrenches. So I use this most often I come back to and it's very handy to have everything in one spot like this. Here are some more squares. Here is my clamp storage. Again nothing really fancy for the clamp storage. Um, just a basic triangular uh, bracket approach. And everything here is a French cleat. If you don't know what a French cleat is, it's basically two 45-degree pieces of wood that hang on each other. One 45-degree is glued to the thing you're hanging. The other is screwed into the wall. And when you slide them together, they hold remarkably well. People mount cabinets and very heavy things using the French cleat system. This is hardwood storage, just scraps if I ever need them. This is just offcuts, usually go to the burn pile. This is a, a chaos section, uh, plus where I keep my glue. This is the first cabinet I ever made. It just holds uh, extension cords, uh, sanders and attachment for the drill, and uh, edge banding and hot glue gun, things like that. This is my bandsaw. This is a 10-inch bandsaw. It does the work that I use a bandsaw for pretty well. I took the fence off because it was kind of a hassle, so I use this little homemade uh, fence which I clamp to the bandsaw for 90 degree cuts and also you can do 45 degree cuts by running it on the other side, so that's pretty handy. And it stores out of the way there. This is a grinder which uh, takes forever to start up and slow down but serves its purpose. This is my drill press. I really like this drill press. It's one of the first big purchases I made, and there's still a lot of spring, and it's, uh, it runs very true. It doesn't wobble. The light still works, and again, about four years in with uh, consistent use, and I don't really notice any change. Some drill bits and things like that up here. And then the table saw. This is sort of the heart of the shop. This is a grizzly. 10-inch hybrid table saw. I have a video about this as well. And on it is a it sits on a mobile base. This is the sled that I use most often. It is super convenient. A lot of people build these big honking sleds that just take forever to store and, and uh, take up a lot of space. So I like my system. This is a router table which I put onto the table saw. I have a video about that. And the fence is actually... Uh, attached on the table saw fence itself. I swapped out the one that I was using and used this one continuous piece. I've been meaning to make a video testing the accuracy of that. I think I'll do that soon. Aside from that, you really have to think about how you're going to store all the shit that comes with your table saw and stuff you're going to buy. Feather boards, jigs, push sticks. Best way i found is magnets. Um, either magnets that are on the jigs themselves or hooks with magnets on them. And so everything around the saw, I got an insert on a magnet. I have these push blocks on a magnet. I have my miter uh, gauge on a magnet. So I'll, you really use the, the magnetism of the saw to your advantage. This is just sort of a push around uh, store all carts, uh, some projects I'm working on. This is what my daughter, when she comes out to the shop, she plays around with the wrenches and screws in, screws to the holes so that keeps her busy. 
just some drawers I made um, on uh, full slides, full length slides, uh, just some jigs, uh, tap die storage, and uh, router storage. This is probably my favorite router, this palm router. Uh, it works on a battery, really like it. And then we have the side of the garage that's dedicated to not woodworking, uh, recycling, uh, bike storage, chair storage, just random crap. It's nice to have one wall that you can just not claim and let it be a garage wall where you can throw crap. So this is uh, the space I have. Now I'm going to show you in real time how long it takes to pack everything up and put everything away. So I'm putting everything away and parking both the cars, and this is sped up at two times speed. And while I do that, I'm going to give you my final thought on my shop space. I am very fortunate to have 24 feet by 24 feet of shop space when I need it. That said, in practice, I really only use about half of that. One car is parked on the right side of the garage, and the side you see me on right now is where I do most of my work when that car is parked. So 12 by 24. And that is usually still enough space for me anyway. Ironically enough, one of the biggest things I like about this garage space is the chief constraint I have to operate under, parking two cars. And sometimes parking two cars very quickly. So things need to be not only movable, but movable quickly. And when that is your main concern, you start to think about, well, what do I need and what can I do without? I need a workbench, but does it need to be a gigantic workbench? I need a way to capture dust, but does it need to be a gigantic cyclone that takes up a huge corner of my shop? When you don't have a lot of space to put things, the space you do have becomes super valuable to you. I agonized over the decision to buy that table saw because I knew it would mean giving up a lot of space. I'm glad I did, but it was an agonizing decision, and I think that's good. That prevents you from buying things you don't need, from buying gigantic tools when smaller might be better, and to just be more creative, which is part of the enjoyment of this hobby for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.